Hey guys, it's Brant. Today we got a little bit different video, different type of video. I'm going to be working on a Whirlpool microwave. This is a microwave that belongs to us. It's about five years old and the problem we're having with it is it will not turn on because it does not see that the door is closed. And I've concluded that one of the switches is actually bad. Now this is a Whirlpool WMH 53520 CS-5. Just for those of you who are curious that's watching this video about this microwave and you might be having the same issue that I have, I'm basically going to show from front to back how I uh, did this in the stages I did it in. Now the first thing I had to do was I had to remove it and get it onto the table and I put a towel underneath it so I didn't scratch the table up and so the issue is basically this switch right here if you look in there you see nothing but a blank hole and uh, you can see at the top how it's not wanting to latch and there's a safety feature on this where it has two switches and both switches have to be engaged there's the top switch you can see that it's broken there's the bottom switch you can see the switch the hook and the latch there in the white and so it, the top switch is apparently pushed back so we're going to have to get into it and see if we can get access to this switch. Now what it looks like is it looks like along the back there are several screws. There's some at the bottom going up the top to the corners around the top and then back down and I'll show later there's some screws actually on the bottom that have to be removed. There's also some screws on the very top there are different kind of screws that have to be removed as well. Those screws there are different kinds of screws and I'll show you how I keep screws separated. So let's go ahead and start working on getting into this microwave. So I've got the top here and I've already took the screws out showing here where each screw was removed and I'd made this video initially for me just to kind of help me remember where screws went back into and it does kind of help later on in the video you'll see where I actually put screws back where they don't belong and so I've removed that cover there and I've also showing here where those are the screws that goes in the top in the very top and then these screws here that go along the back side and around the edge I put them in a different little container and kept them separated out from the other ones because they're small littler screws that are just kind of like sheet metal screws. So once we lay the on the microwave on its back you can see that I've got some screws here that need to be removed. There's several screws that goes up the top along the sides along the front and this is attaching this bottom cover to the top and to the, the cover and those and, and that's the vent there that's all dirty so I figure while I've got it taken apart I can go ahead and put that in some water and get that cleaned and I'm gonna give this thing a cleaning while I've got it apart too because there's a bunch of grease that you can see there that's collected over the time so I want to get that cleaned up too now I've got the screws out and you see here that I've got them separated and it turns out there's going to be two different kinds of screws in that but I didn't realize it at the time but I do realize it later so you see that I'm going to set the screws to the side with the other screws and I walk over and I look and I've got that grate that filter in the soapy Dawn dishwashing liquid water and warm water hot water to melt some of that dissolve some of that grease down so we're going to work on getting this cover loose and you see there's two wires there that that goes to the rotating carousel and so we those just pull right out and then further down you'll see that there is the utility light and that grease I'm going to clean all that off and look on down there's the utility light that's the light this unit actually mounts to the wall above the stove and so that lights up above the stove and so I was going to take those loose but they were on there pretty good and I saw that there's a harness over here to the right that I'm going to show here in a second where I can just take that loose and that's a little clip there 
and I can take that loose and then I can unplug it from the connector up here at the top and then just take that whole piece away to the side. And then once that is unplugged, I had to use two hands to do it. I had to put the camera down for a second. That can all be taken away, and I wiped it down. I was cleaning with, like, Clorox wipes and stuff like that. So now that that's off the back side, I started to take it off, and it came off this side real easily, but it did not want to come off the other side, and I was like, what is up with that? Why is that doing that? And I discovered that over on this side there is one lonely screw that I missed. And this screw is not like any of the other screws. It's like the screws that came out of the top, but it's a little shorter. So I got the Phillips screwdriver and took that out. And once I took it out, I was able to remove. You see that it's a shorter screw than the other screws that went in the top. So I set that aside with the other screws there to keep them all together. So now I was able to lift the top off and I set it over to the side. And there's the bottom there. And so that exposes the insides of the microwave. And there is a sensor there. This microwave has the ability to sense if your food is heated up to a certain temperature. There's a couple internal filters that I would have liked to have known those were in there because I probably would have replaced them because they didn't seem like the type that you'd want to rinse out in water. Uh, that fabric on the back side, I didn't want to get it wet, but they didn't look too dirty, so I, you know, sat them out to the side. Uh, there is where the lamp is. If you have to replace the lamp inside the microwave, there is a little transformer, and it's a 20 amp fuse there, so I just noted that there is a 20 amp fuse on the inside of that there. And then coming around the side, there is a little, there's a resistor that's you know a high uh, amperage resistor there that is the screw there's the screw that attaches the front uh, control panel there's that resistor and that little board again there is a capacitor and down here is a big capacitor that uses the, I guess that powers the magnetron and so you, I was trying to get a good picture of that there for people there's a diode above it. There's the magnetron there that basically cooks your food uh, and will cook you if you don't have all the safety features in place. And down here on the bottom is the transformer. And that is a very heavy transformer. This unit is very heavy on the right side because of the transformer, because of the transformer and the magnetron. And there's the fan that blows on all of that and keeps all that cool. So, what I want to start doing is taking a look at how am I going to get to this switch. Is it going to be really difficult to get to? So I wanted to start looking. There's the back of the control panel. And if you look back there, that black switch that's attached to that white connector back there, the blue connector is plugging into the black switch and that white housing, that is what I need to get to. That is the one that I'm having issue with. And down there on the bottom, there is the other one. And that one is fine. So I feel like all I need to do is take off this front panel to get to that switch. So getting in and getting a better look at that switch, I, can, I can't really see anything that's wrong with it. But I know that this screw here is the screw that holds it in. And there's a screw down at the bottom that holds the other one in. And it is a Torx bit. And I've come to find out that that is a T10 Torx bit that I will show you later. So here's the single screw that is holding this panel on and basically you unscrew that screw and then that whole panel lifts up with some hooks and it just separates away from the microwave and there's some uh, and there's some wires that you have to unplug and some connectors you have to unplug but it's a very but it's a fairly simple and straightforward process. Once you get that loose, you just kind of lift up on it, grab a hold of it by the sides, and you lift up. And it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you see there it's lifted. And once it's lifted, you can pull it away. You see it's got those hooks there that it kind of hooks into the unit. And some of this was real difficult. So there's a ground wire, and then there's two or three or four connectors 
at the top. So there's a connector there. I just wanted to document this, that there is a ground at the bottom that I was going to have to unscrew that one. And then there's a red connector there that's color coded. And then there is a connector there with gray wires. A connector that there's two amp connectors, which I ended up leaving those on. There's a connector there and there's a connector there with two red wires. So once I got everything unplugged, I unhooked the ground wire and then I unplugged the red one. I unplugged the uh, the one that had the four or five wires on the it, the one that had the gray wires, the one that had the two red wires, and the one at the top. I didn't unplug the amp connectors because I was able to just slide it to the side at this point and it was out of the way. So now I was easily could get to what I needed to get to. So all it was going to take is just getting the screwdriver out, getting my T10 tuck Torx bit, and getting it into the screwdriver, and then unscrewing that screw and removing that switch. Now come to find out what I had concluded had come was wrong with it was it had gotten sprung backwards. There was nothing wrong with it. In my case, it wasn't broken. But this switch has a part number on it, and you could have easily got a replacement part for it. There's many places online where you can get replacement parts. But there was two things. That piece there, the white piece, where, that the spring was sprung backwards. If you look at it in this shot, you see that it is moved all the way backwards to the back. And that is a bad place for it to be because the hook there will not even hook into the latches on the door. So it has gotten pushed too far back somehow. So basically what I had to do was I had to just move it forward. I had to put, take the, turn the camera off and move it forward to where it was in the proper place it was supposed to be. Because you see it's supposed to look like that one. And how that one is not sprung. It is in the place where it's supposed to be in the spring. So see now I've moved it back into the proper position. And you can see that it basically as the thing as the door closes it goes in there pushes that switch back. And there's a little nib on it that basically pushes in on the uh on the switch. So what I wanted to do here was I just wanted to look at the two and compare them because I didn't know if it was broke. So I wanted to pull this one out to compare the two. So here's the other one and what I was looking for is I was looking to see if it looked broke there or if the switch, the plastic switch on the inside there that moves back and forth, if it looked broke. And what I was doing here was just looking at it and getting a good picture of the part number there getting a good picture of the switch and the little nib, the little actual black nib that pushes in whenever the switch is engaged. And so what happens is it's a safety switch where these both have to be engaged to show that the door is closed in order for microwave to work. And I concluded that they were both identical, that neither one of them was actually broke. The one that I was trying to, thinking I was going to need to replace, was not broke. So... I got it mounted back in there, and I got the other one mounted back in there. So it was simple as that. It was just putting it back into the position it needed to be in because somehow it had gotten pushed backwards, and it was going to constantly be open in that state. And so what I was going to have to do now is just reverse the process. Put the control panel back in. So there's the control panel, all the wires plugged back in. I just made this video to denote that I got everything back where it belonged. And everything plugged back in because the last thing you want to do is not plug something back in or plug something in the wrong place. I wanted to put the ground screw back in place, make sure that's all properly grounded. So it shows there, there's a little lip there and I'm showing that whenever you do put that ground screw back in place, there's a little lip there that kind of holds it in place and keeps it from twisting around. And so once you get all that done, you can basically uh, just take the front control panel and lift it up and put it back to where those hooks there, right there is a good shot of one, where it lines up with those slots. You get them lined up, get it flush, and then push it down. And so once you see it, you see it go down. I'm doing it right here trying to show you. Make sure that ground wire is not in the way. And then 
it goes down. And it should be flush at the very bottom, just like that. And so then, once that's flush, and it's flush all the way up, and it's flush all the way there, you can take your screw, and you can put your screw back in. And then you can tighten that up, and then you're done reinstalling the control panel. And, uh, and then, you know, yeah, we're pretty much almost done just putting everything back together. So once that's done, I'd put the filters back in. If I'd have known these filters uh, were in there, I would have replaced them, as I said earlier. So I put them back in there. And when they go back in, there's a little trick to them. Uh, they actually uh, mount and they go under the the little black hinges right there, the little black clips, they go under that. And sometimes it's easy to take stuff apart and harder to put it back together because you don't remember exactly how it goes together. So what I had to do at this point in time was I put the microwave face down and I had to hang the microwave off the table where the handle wouldn't be in the way so it would rest flat. And so it was still very secure because what I had to do at this point in time was take the cover and basically start on this end towards me and just take the cover and then lay it over onto the sides. So once I did that, the thing to notice is you want those to be flush. Down here at the very bottom, there's these clips that clip in right along here. And you want that to be flush. There should be no bulges. And so what I did was I went ahead and put this screw in, but I didn't tighten it too tight because I wanted... If you notice, I had tightened it, and then I went back and loosened it because I wanted to be able to have a little bit of play to line those, the to line the cover up with those screw holes if I needed to. And so once I had done that, I was ready to start putting screws in. The types of screws that get used are not the ones with the flanges; they're the ones without the flanges. Remember, I said I mixed the two of them together. This one doesn't have a flange. The ones that has the flange like that right there are the ones that's actually going to attach the bottom. So when you have everything all buttoned back up as far as the back cover, you should have all these screws in. So we've got screws all the way around and the cover is flush all the way around the top and the bottom and flush with the sides. So now here's the bottom piece. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this plugged up, this connector plugged up back in here. Always make sure you do your connectors and plug your connectors back up so you always have everything uh, works whenever you get done. Uh, I actually went back and I, there's a video cut there because I went back and referred to my first video. Which one was on the bottom? Was the gray one on the bottom, was the black one on the bottom, or was the blue one on the bottom. So I went back and looked at my video taking it apart, and the black one was on the bottom. So I put the black one in, and then I was able to put the blue one in. And it's kind of tight, because you really can't, I had to bend that a little bit. I'm not usually big on bending pins, but I couldn't get it to it either other way. So that's in place there. That's the carousel motor. And so that's all buttoned up down there. I'm going to put that back in that little clip, the wiring harness. Put it in the little clip. There's protective, uh, there's like a protective sheath over the wires to keep the wires all together. So it'll pop right in that little clip. It's like a little C-clip. Whenever you pop it in, it, it, it holds it. So this bottom cover, actually, if you notice, it, ha it can go outside, but you want it to be inside. And those little slots you see right there is where it actually hangs on the wall. There's hooks on the wall. that that's There's a bracket that's mounted to the wall that those hooks go in. And then there's two holes drilled in the cabinet above it. And there's two bolts that comes down through the cabinet that comes into the top of it and then holds it in place. But yeah, you want that to be flush all the way around there. And the screws that's going to go on this one are going to be the ones that's got the little flange around them. Because I think there's 12 of these and there's like 13 of the black ones. So I've got the screws put back in. It screws all the way up along the bottom flange there. That's coming along the bottom door. At the bottom of the door of the microwave that comes around there, comes down the sides, and then that is all secured. I usually will start them 
and I'll get them all in before I actually, when you're putting in multiple screws, and then I retighten that screw on the side. When you're putting in multiple screws, you always want to just screw them a little bit of time. So I always go back and check. I uh, got all my screws. All my screws are gone out of that one. So the only screws I got left are the screws that goes on the top. These screws right here. So we got to flip the microwave over on its bottom. Got the I've I've let the water out of that and let it start drying. And so now we got it flipped over on its bottom. And we're going to go ahead and put the screws in the top into the locations that I'm pointing at. And like I said, this video originally was more for me. So I've got the screws in. I thought you'd get the satisfaction of seeing the last screw. That's all of them. So now there's all the screws back in. And uh, starting to smile a little bit because it's a job well done. And I have already plugged the microwave up and tested to make sure that the switch is working. I did leave that out. And so there it is. It is mounted. It is mounted back in place. You close the door. The light goes off. You open it back up. The light comes on. What the problem was when you closed it, the light stayed on because it did not recognize that the door was closed. And that's it. It's fixed. So this has been an in my head, uh, I can fix it video where I fix my microwave. I'm quite the handyman. I'll be doing a lot of this with appliances and retro tech and gaming and computer tech coming up and let me know if you like this video guys and I'll see you next time.